I understand that there are over 2 million stereo-ready televisions in home in the U.S. What kind of screens are these? Real projection, DLP? Yes, um, there are uh, over 2 million 3D-ready television sets in the home today. The pre predominance of those are DLP rear screen projectors from people like Samsung and Mitsubishi. And there's also a number of plasma displays that are used in the frame sequential method with shutter glasses. The appreciation and effectiveness of a stereo screen has a lot to do with the area of viewing that is covered by it when projecting stereo imagery. Since the home theater is in general a small environment, will the LCD and plasma screens that are so popular now be large enough? Yeah, so I really don't think that the uh, screen size in terms of your peripheral vision is so, so much of a limitation. So in other words, your ability to see the sides of the screen between 2D and 3D is not so much of a problem. The really interesting aspect is that if somebody creates the stereoscopic geometries for a 40-foot or 50-foot screen in the theater, then when you bring that down to a smaller screen, the depth will be uh, much compressed. So you're not going to see the same 3D effect on a smaller screen simply because the, your eyes remain the same distance apart, although the pixels are closer together than they were intended to be on the screen. So uh, I think most practitioners are looking to depth grade differently for small screens than they do for large screens. In other words, material will be optimized for 3D in a home viewing environment, just as they optimize uh, aspect ratio and the audio tracks for the home today. Great. There has been a lot of poor stereo-based films made and some that simply use stereography for thrill moments in the story. Uh, for example, objects floating off screen, objects thr thrusting into the room, paddle balls, etc. How can the filmmakers do a much better job of directing the audience's eye with stereo te technology? Well, you ask a very important creative question about um, uh, the use of 3D. And yes, there have been bad 3D films, and of course there's been a lot of bad 2D films that uh, we've all seen. I think that 3D has to be thought of as one more uh, arrow in the quiver of creative techniques that the cinematographer could use. And I think in the right hands, 3D is going to be almost transparent to the user. A well done 3D film is not going to jump out at you. You'll just feel like you're immersed within the picture, that you're one of the actors, that you're on the set. And I think that's just the measure of success. I think in the early days, I think some producers put pressure on that within the first reel, the first 20 minutes, you had to have some big dramatic 3D thing happen so that you remind everybody that you're in a 3D cinema. But that's a fad that I think is uh, nearing completion. With the notion of stereo in the home uh, looming as a distinct possibility, what have you heard in terms of the willingness of producers to put money behind their work? It's, uh, the investment by producers, I think, really all comes down to what the economic model is. If commercials could be uh, monetized for more money, if people could uh, get more subscribers on their cable channel in 3D, they're going to do it. Nobody knows the answer to that yet, but some of the early experiments have created a lot of optimism. The sports leagues have been very enthusiastic about the, uh, the fans' reaction to stereoscopic coverage. Concerts have gone very well in, in 3D. Uh, I've seen ballet and opera and you know, movies, animations. So I think what we'll find is that folks will discover the economic models that make sense for 3D content that will drive new channels, new content. And at the same time, the cost of making 3D productions will get closer and closer to 2D. Already a lot of the techniques available are, are really not that complex. So if I could produce something in 3D for just 10% more, then they're probably going to do it.